it is happening in a slow way, but I, it's such a traumatic experience that I think it becomes sort of locked into a compartment inside them. And it's, it, it's, it's very difficult to find the key to unlocking. But I think the more people, the more brave women I see getting up and speaking about their experiences, it, it inspires others. I think once they've heard some people talk about it, they think, ah, oh, well, maybe I could do that too. And I, and I, you know, in these centres, I've talked to, you know, a lot of women and girls. And I said to them, would you be prepared to, to get up and say a few words? And they said, well, you know, a few years ago, we wouldn't have thought about it. But now, you know, I think we could. And I think if we could tap into some of these women to get them, you know, on the radio, on the television to talk about it, I don't know, the whole taboo, I think, would be lifted. But it, it is happening. I mean, we were surrounded by wonderful people like Suzanne and Refuge and Women's Aid who are doing so much to, to help this. And, um, and the other thing, it can affect anybody. I don't think people realise from any strata of society. It doesn't matter who you are. And I just want all these people to know that, that they're not alone and that there is help there. There's help out there. And, you know, let's, you know, train them to, to, to go and get this help. Um, I think that's why I launched it at Wild this spring, probably the last time we all saw each other before we were locked down, um, hashtag everyone's problem, because it is everybody's problem. And I think now we have to go on and, and find a solution. I want to say how proud I am to have become patron of Safe Lives. Um, and Safe Lives will always stick, will, I, I, stick in my memory from the first visit I paid there. Um, um, Diana Barron, who was the founder of Safe Lives, asked a friend of hers if she'd asked me to come to, to one of their meetings with, I think, half a dozen women who were talking about their experiences. And I, I arrived not quite knowing what to expect. And we all sat down in a circle, um, police, journalists, people with me, um, and we started to listen to the First Lady speaking very candidly, very bravely, and I promise you there wasn't a dry eye in the place. I mean, even the toughest men I could see with tears. We were all pretending to, that we got a cold and blowing our noses. But the experience was so moving. I mean, they had these incredibly eloquent young women telling their stories. Uh, the horrendous things that had happened to them. You know, we just couldn't believe it. And I think, again, that was, that was the moment when I thought, goodness, I, I, I've got to do something to help these people. And I remember talking to one of the mothers um, who'd lost her daughter in the most horrific circumstances. And I said, look, I don't know what I can do to help, but I promise I'm going to do everything I can to, to try to try and bring this out into the open. So I'm incredibly you know, honoured to be part of it now. And I hope you know, when we're all released again, um, I'll be able to go out and, and meet a lot more people.